from Square One Physio. Today I'm going to take you through a session with Laura, uh, intermediate level mat. So just you on your mat at home, rolled up towel as a pillow behind your head, which is sometimes quite nice. Yeah? So you're going to start lying on your back as Laura is here, knees pointing up to the ceiling, feet nice and flat. Legs are hip distance apart here, so about a fist between knees and ankles. You're going to start just warming up the lower back and getting the pelvis moving. As you breathe out, I want you to flatten your lower back down to the back mat here. As you breathe in, let your tailbone be heavy and arch your back slightly. So you're going to continue these two movements. Make it quite a subtle movement. Take your focus to your breath, exhaling out through the mouth, inhaling in through the nose. I'm going to be using a rib cage breath, so taking our air into the side of the ribs. Yes, good. As you continue a couple more, start to notice your deep tummy muscles work, particularly to help that flattening of the back. Match that with a subtle pelvic floor. And then start to find your position with your pelvis that's in between those two extremes. So finding your neutral here, perhaps a small blueberry could fit underneath your lower back behind your belly button. Otherwise your tailbone is quite heavy and you should feel like nothing's really having to work very hard to maintain this. Take your hands onto your hip bones at the front now just to feel. We're aiming to keep our trunk and our pelvis stable as we go into a bent knee fallout. Now, as you breathe out, let one leg fall and roll over just as far as your hips don't move, coming back on the breath in. Let's alternate sides, often one side harder than the other. Good. Inhaling in. So you need to exhale that leg away from you as your tummy draws in and helps you stay stable. So equal weight through the back of your right and your left side of your pelvis. Now keep going here if this feels right for you. Otherwise we're going to progress. So bringing one leg and then the other up to tabletop. Beautiful. Same idea. Left leg first, you're going to move that whole leg out to the side and then inhale it back in and we'll continue alternating. So with your legs being up in tabletop, you've got a little bit more load and more work through the tummy to control the position of your back and pelvis. Good. And as you take one or two more each side, bring both arms up to the roof and see if you can get that sense of stability without the feedback of your fingers. Yes. Got one more each side here, breathing out as you open. Inhaling through the center, breathing out to open. Inhaling through the center, fan. Fantastic. Bring your arms down, leaving your legs or bringing them up to tabletop if they're not there. Spread your hands a little bit wider than normal. Good. And here I want you to flatten your lower back, so squash your blueberry. Glue your knees together. We're getting ready for the side to side. So shoulder blades stay heavy. As you roll your legs to the right, your left hip will lift. Now use your breath out to come back to the center. So you're going to move on the breath in, which might feel a little bit weird as we go to the left. Opposite shoulder heavy, exhale return. So getting some of our oblique muscles into this movement now, helping us control the rotation and come back through the center. Good. Try and relax around through the neck, opening through the collarbones. A little bit of a gentle pressure down through the back of the arms, completely fine, but try and avoid that sort of rounded shoulder position. Good. Pausing in the center there, give your knees up again towards you, just let the front of the hips fold and relax. Now you need to come back up to that tabletop position, arms resting down beside you. Good. 
So same thing, your blueberry behind your lower back is squashed as we go into some toe taps. One leg at a time as you breathe out, tap the foot down. I'm going to alternate using the breath out and finding a position where your back doesn't arch. So it might be that you don't get all the way down. Listen to your back, listen to your body, more important than going for the full movement. Now, if that's going well for you and you'd like to progress, glue your knees and ankles together next time they're up at tabletop and start to send both thighs away from you. So the knees are still bent. We're rotating the thigh in the hip socket. Good. And maybe modifying your range. Yeah, only going as low as your lower back is super glued to the mat. One more here. Use that breath out. Come back in and then hug your knees in towards you again. Really well done. Let your feet come down now. Find that hip distance alignment once more. Now you're going to the chest lift. You're taking your hands behind your head. Fingers interlocked with thumbs running down the back of your neck. Relax your head then onto now. Take your elbows wide but so you can still see them out of the corners of your eyes. With your spine, we've got our blueberry back now in your neutral, I'm going into the chest lift. So inhaling here, exhale as you curl your head, neck and chest up, take your eye gaze to your knees, pause for the breath in, and then as you next exhale, roll back down. Good, soften the neck, let your hands take the weight of your head, curl up, Knit your front ribs, widen through the elbows slightly. Inhale, holding before you then roll back down. As we continue here, take note of your lower back and pelvis. I'd like you to still have your tailbone fairly heavy here. Yeah? So you haven't done a pelvic tilt to flatten your back. Two more. Exhale as you curl up. Good, coming to just off your shoulder blades, inhale, and then rolling back down. And one more to hold, if that feels okay for you at the top. Adding some oblique twists. So we pause here, cement down through your hips and your lower body. As you next breathe out, bring your right rib across to the left, come back through to the center, and then swap. So we're going for that opposite rib to hip, Connection, coming down, beautiful. That felt okay, let's stay up and do three to each side but alternating. And curling up, establish your chest lift position here. Exhale as you rotate, stay lifted as you centre, and the other way, good. Take the movement just as big as your hips don't roll, so it might be quite a small range. Good. Keep your legs stable. Good. Even yourself off from right to left and then come slowly back down. Nicely done. Bring your legs up to tabletop one by one again. And you're going to take hold behind your thighs. So we're getting ready for the assisted roll up. For some people, actually harder than the full roll up, we'll see how you go. So I want you to push your thighs into your hands here, but at the same time, pull your hands towards you. So slightly active through the arms. You're going to do one of those double leg femur arcs again, or toe taps, as you start to chest lift. So in your breath out, nod your chin, push your legs into your hands, plant the feet, and then curl up, lengthening the spine. Inhale here, on the way down, roll back from your sit bones, Keep your feet heavy until your arms are pretty much straight, and then you should be able to roll back down. Okay, inhale, exhale, push through the hamstrings into the hands, aim the feet towards the floor, open around through your shoulders, and then as you stack up, reach to the crown of the head. Exhale on the way down, leave your feet heavy. Find that push of the hamstrings into the arms and then come down. Good. Find a bit of a peacefulness to this movement if you can. Breathe out, tuck the chin. 
take your focus to that articulation we're aiming for, that bone by bone movement. Pause. Keep going if that's the version for you. Otherwise, take both arms, both legs out straight to me. Mm -hmm. Full roll up time. Take a breath in. Exhale. Same movement. Rolling back through the leg. Good. As you breathe in, your arms will reach back and overhead. Keep the ribs connected and don't let the lower back arch. Bring the arms straight up to vertical before you then start to chest lift and curl up. Every time you come up, we're going to find a bit of a curl forwards first, yeah, before you then stack up tall. Inhale, exhale, roll down. Open and lengthen the front of the hips. Reach the hands overhead, but staying connected, ribs to hip at the front. Then bring your arms straight up, tuck the chin and peel it. Good. Come to that forward reach position. Stack up, let the shoulders melt. Inhale. And one last one to roll slowly down. Take your arms back behind you for one last reach. Even here now, if it feels okay, let your form go a little bit, let your back arch, yes. Then bring your hands back down beside you and bend your knees up so your feet are flat. I'm only going to take you through some bridging now. For many of you, it will feel better without the towel behind your head. So found neutral through back, hip distance, legs and feet again. Take a breath in and then as you breathe out, start to roll the tailbone up. Go through that pelvic tilt, then continue to peel up, pausing there. So then up on your shoulder blades. Your tailbone is tucking, yeah, so your hips are open. Your ribs are actually softening at the front. Take a breath in here, and then from your back ribs first, start to roll back down. Stay open and wide across the collarbones and heavy through the head. Come back through a flat back to your neutral. Inhale, exhale, roll back. So your pubic bone curls up, it's pressing to the ceiling. As well as curling up, your thighs and your knees are reaching out away from you. And as you roll down, you try and keep that sense of reaching out through the knees. So as though your spine could be getting a little bit longer every time you roll back down. Good. Couple more here in your own time. Match your articulation up with your breath out. At the top, pause as you breathe in. And then match your articulation back down again with your exhale. Continue with this, otherwise I'm going to offer progression. I'm going to bridge up once more to hold. Good. Curling up as you breathe out. Then going into that bent knee fallout or like a clam, one leg starts to open to the side only as far as your hips don't roll. Now stay on that leg for four more repetitions. So five clams in total. The opposite side working quite hard to stabilize. Good. Open and heavy through the chest. When you've done five, you're going to swap to the other side. Both hip bones level. Good. Stabilizing glute, really on. Only going as far as you don't feel the hips roll with you. Good. Couple more here. Good. Weight will be going to the outside of that foot. Slightly, but one more. Then take a little rest by rolling down through the back here. Lovely articulation back down. We're going to hold at the top of the next one for both legs at the same time. In some ways actually easier because you've got an equal movement away from the centre of the body. Before you begin to open, 
See if bringing your knees together to touch without the feet moving feels okay for you. Then from here, open to your clam. Yeah. So taking the knees all the way in, we'll get the inner thighs working. Then using the side glutes to open. Whilst our feet glute max is helping hold us here. Let's continue here for three more. Root staying soft at the front. And two more. Good. Using your breath out as you open. This time come back with the legs just to parallel. So railroad track legs, take a breath in and then roll slowly back down. So you have really woken up through the backs of the legs and glutes there. Give your knees a cuddle in towards you, a couple of rolls each direction. And you're going to go back into a little burst of abdominal work and give you your towel pillow back. Come up to tabletop. I want you to take both of your hands onto your left kneecap. Yeah, one on top of the other, doesn't really matter. Yeah, in a second, we're going to curl up and then start to stretch the other leg out. Yes, beautiful. Hold that, come down a little bit narrower. Yeah. So lower back is flat, blueberry is squashed. Hands are pushing down to the leg whilst the leg is pushing up into the hands. Stay here, just swap the arms and legs. Good, pause, open across the chest. This leg is reaching out long. We've got our tabletop shin with the other leg. Now slightly faster, exhale, change, and change. As you continue here with Laura, if you start to notice that your neck is overworking, just bring your head back down and keep the legs moving, yeah? Good, moving your legs out past each other, parallel, like you're trying to dot the wall in front of you. One or two more, and then roll back down, hug the knees. Beautiful. So it should have really woken up the tummy. Good. Round two can be exactly the same as that. Or we're coming back to that hands behind head and that oblique movement we practiced earlier, taking it into the crisscross. So we'll start with your legs one by one coming up to tabletop. We'll start slow to get the coordination and then progress the speed. Curl up on your breath out. Keep the left knee where it is, stretch the right leg. Yep, so we've been to that leg position before. Now curl up towards that leg. I actually want you to widen your elbows so it's rib to hip. Swap over. Yeah, so elbow towards knee somewhat. <laughs> now slightly faster, breathe out, change and change. Hips and lower back planted, upper spine movement, rib to hip. Keep your breath out. Let's go for four more. Four, three, two, one, and hug the knees. Come all the way down. Yes. As a reward, let's turn you onto your side. So if you've got something under your head, it's quite nice to have both arms out in front. If you're pillowless at home, then maybe support your head with your hands, elbows bent. Knees are bent and we've got hip stacked on hip, shoulder on shoulder. Knees are going to stay glued. As you start your breath out, top arm will lift and you're aiming to rotate through your upper body. Your head will follow. Your arm will open, which will give you a nice stretch through the chest, but don't forget to twist through your upper back and ribs. When you get to your range, take a breath in and then breathe out, come back around. Let your head be heavy, either on your hand or on your towel or pillow. Exhale, rotate. Knees staying together just helps us feel that the pelvis is stable and that puts the rotation a bit more through the upper back, which is where we want it. I'm going to take two more. Breathing out, head is rolling, arms moving because your upper trunk is rotating. Yes. One more, and I'd like you to hold that position that you get to. Breathing out. Good. When you can't go any further, 
pause, take a breath into that top rib if you can, and then breathe out, aim to go a little bit further. Lovely, inhale here, then exhale, come back around. Good, before we do the other side for that, we need to do a little bit more glute work. So for everybody, take your underneath hand under your head, you can even go under your pillow, whichever feels best. Good, we're going to start with your top hand down in front, now lengthen both legs out. We're aiming to be like we're lying on a tight rope and cool hips, shoulders, head all in one line. Good. And hip stacked on hip, so both sides of your waist are even. Good. Going into some side kick series, we're aiming to work the lateral glutes, so really important for our pelvic stability. As you breathe out, starting just up and down, Start to lift the leg up, but only as high as you don't shorten the top waist. Inhale, back down. So we're looking that this hip doesn't get closer to your shoulder. Good. So small movement really. Aiming to feel length rather than height. Now if you'd like to challenge the stability of your body, take your top hand onto your hip. It can also give quite good feedback as to whether you're keeping your waist long. Soften around the shoulder. Good. Watch that that leg doesn't start to creep forwards. Keep it in line with the body, otherwise it changes the muscles that are working. Good. Exhaling as you lift, inhaling as you lower. We're going to hold this next one up at hip level. Now from your hip socket, we're going to start to circle. So sort of dinner plate size circles, doesn't matter which direction because we're going to do both. Slightly harder now to stabilize. So if you do need to take your hand down, you can. Otherwise, try and get a little bit more tummy connection. And reversing the direction. Yes. Good. Keep breathing just naturally through this movement. And finishing there, still at hip level, a front to back movement now. So on your breath in, Keep your leg forwards, but only as far as you can before you curve the back. Then as you breathe out, reach your leg back behind you, only as far as you can before you arch the back the other way. So like you've got a skewer running through your hips, you're just hinging your legs forwards on the breath in and back on the breath out. Good, three more, keeping your ankle up in line with the top of your hip keeping your body stable as you do this and trying to soften around the neck and shoulders. Inhale forwards. Good. Exhale back. And we'll go for one more with my awful Pilates counting. Inhale forwards. Exhale back. And then come back and rest that leg down. Well done. One more thing on our side here before we swap, going into a side plank. So I'm going to talk you through all the different modifications. If you know the one for you straight away, go there. Knees bent, please, and bring them back now so that your knees are a bit more in line with your hip. Come up onto your supporting arm forearm, so be your left forearm here. Good. Good. Now, immediately, I want you to feel like before you even lift your hips, you're working to lift out of that left shoulder girdle. Yeah. Take your top hand on your hip if you can. Yeah. And now pressing down through your knees and your elbows, start to float your hips up. So creating a long line from head to knees. Good. And then lower back down slowly. That's option one, still hard. Yeah. Option two, keep that same move, uh, position but stretch your top leg. Foot flexed like you're standing on a wall. Try that lift now. Breathe out as you lift. Neck matches the line of the spine. Underneath shoulder working quite hard. And then slowly come down. Option three, full side plank, both legs straight. Good, flex both toes like you're standing on a wall. And breathe out as you lift. So both waists become even in length, both sides of the neck even, and then resist back down. 
So if the version that's working for you, we're going to do two more. Take a breath in. Breathe out as you lift. Feel that length, crown of head to heels, and then resist gravity as you lower. Bonus add-on, stretch your top arm. At the top of the next one, pause and hold. Exhale to get there. Maybe this is enough, otherwise try starring your top arm up and down. And four more, and down, and three, down, two, down, one more. Arm comes down first, and then you lower back down. Nice control. Good. Turning over to the other side, we're going to switch your head up this end. So you're going to set up for book openings first. So for you that might have been hands behind the head, elbows bent. Today with us, Bora, both arms straight out in front. Knees are bent and forwards, so your heels would be in line with your sit bones approximately. Shoulder on shoulder, hip on hip. Good. Take a breath in first. Breathe out as you start to open through the arms, head, rib cage, and thoracic rotating. Pause, inhale there, and then slowly come back around. Make sure where you've got your pillow or towel, if you've got one, that you can actually roll onto it. That will help keep the neck soft. Enjoy that stretch through the front of the chest, but don't let your arm be disconnected from the side body. Good. Three more here. Knees staying glued one on top of the other. Breathe out to twist. Yes. Each time perhaps getting a little bit further. Inhale, close your arms. Exhale, let your eye gaze follow your fingertips and roll around. A little bit more ribs. Yes. Coming back. On our last one, we're going to hold for that extra breath again. And breathing out, top arm moves. When you feel like you can't go any further, take a breath in. See if you can send it to your top rib cage. Then as you breathe out, let it twist a little bit more. That's nice. Coming back around. And moving on to our side kick series for our glutes. The underneath hand goes under the head for everybody. Start with your top hand down or straight to your hip if you feel that's right for you. And lengthen both legs out. Good. Head to feet, one straight line. Bring your head back a touch. Good. Top hip is reaching away from you subtly. And keep that as you breathe out and start to float that top leg up. Then inhale back down. Lengthening out through the foot. Good. Thigh muscles trying to not work too much, but rather feel that side of your pelvis area work. Good. If you did so on the other side and you'd like to try, take your top hand to your hip. Yes, continue here. Good. Making sure the leg stays back in line with the spine. Two more here and hold your next one up at hip level and we've got eight circles each direction. Draw in through lower tummy, pop it floor slightly more. If you need to, take that top hand down and when you've done your eight, start to reverse. Trying to get a real circle action, making sure that you don't miss that back portion of the circle. Top shoulder staying open. Oh, it looks simple, but it's a burner. And last variation here, skewer through the hip. Inhale, sweep the leg forwards. Exhale, back. But only as far forwards and back as your lower back stays stable in its neutral position. Foot staying hovering parallel to the floor and line with the hip. Yes. Go for one more. Inhale, lengthen forwards. Exhale back. Then come back in line with the body and rest the leg down. Forearm plank down. So come up to your forearm. We'll go through the three 
progressions again, but of course if you know the one that works for you, go there now. Both knees bent. This time your knees are back so that your thighs are more in a straight line with your body. Hips still stacked. Yes. One side can feel quite funny in comparison to the other. Breathe out as you lift your hip. Lengthen the crown of head away from your knees. See if your top hand can go onto your hip. That just opens the shoulder. And then come back down. Good. Top leg now lengthens if you'd like to try the next progression. Breathe out. Use your underneath glute and underneath waist and shoulder to help lift. As you come down, control that so you don't sink back down into the shoulder. Both legs out straight. Now, knees long, feet stacked like you're standing on a wall. Eye gaze straight ahead. Inhale. Exhale. Peel up. Reach long. And then resist as you come back down. Good. Two more of the variation that works for you. Coming slowly up, hips staying stacked on the other one. Yes. And down. Imagine you're pulling your underneath elbow down towards your hip slightly. Holding your next one up. Good. Lengthen this top arm. Then you're going to arc it up on the breath in, down on the breath out for five. Or perhaps you're just holding statically. Good. As you finish this last arm arc, come slowly back down. Good, nice control. Good. Turn over onto your back. Head can be on your towel or pillow. To stretch out through those glute muscles, let's take a figure four glute stretch. So crossing your right ankle over your left thigh. Yep. Yeah. Then lifting both legs up towards you, hook your hands around through the back of your left leg. Good. Then whilst keeping your tailbone heavy, if you want more stretch, start to pull the legs towards you. Depending on how that feels, you can also try pushing that top knee out away. Yeah. Good. Let your upper body soften down into your mat as you hold for a few breaths here. Feeling even weight through both sides of the hip. And then you haven't touched your bottom up from the mat. Good. Then slowly make your way, changing sides. Good. Pushing out that other knee now, whilst at the same time you pull your legs towards you. Tailbone is glued. Yes. Neck is soft. Head, shoulders, all relaxed there. Now from this position, unhook your top leg. Take your hands back behind your thighs again. We're going to use an assisted roll up to transition to sitting. So on your breath out, start to tuck your head, push your legs into your hands and roll up to sitting. Good. Cross your legs and transition now to a four point kneeling position. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Your wrist feels you can also go on to a fist or you can go forearms or prop yourself up on something we're going to go into a cat cow movement so some spinal mobility as you breathe out curve your back take your eye gaze down inhale as you walk your spine into spinal extension eye gaze will look forwards and up just going as far as you feel comfortable good Breathe out, scoop from tummy first. Let that initiate the movement. Drop the towel down and bone down the back of your legs. As you come into your extension here, open and shine out through the front of the chest. Widen the sit bones. One more to each position. And moving like a wave is traveling through your spine taking it to its full range or whatever feels best for you. Then find your middle of that two movements or your neutral. Yeah. Take a little bit more arch through your lower back. Yes. What I'd like you to think of now is that your upper back is pushing up away from the floor slightly. So we're not curving 
but we're also, if you can do a bad or more, we're not sinking the chest down so that we have our little chicken scapula here. No, press up, beautiful. Trying to keep that, start to extend just the right leg back behind you, lengthen it off the floor, but trying to maintain your trunk stable. Inhale it back down. Exhale, try the other leg. It's like you've placed your favorite isolation cocktail on your back and you're trying not to let it tip over. Good. Adding on, if that's right, as you reach your right leg, stretch your left arm forwards and off as well. Get to calm back on your breath in. And opposite arm and leg. Now to that, while still staying lifted out of that supporting arm. That was nicely done. Let's go one more each combination of limbs. Back of the neck long, so eye gaze is down. Yes, beautiful. Now transition your way down to your tummy. It sometimes feels nice to have your forehead resting onto your pillow or towel. You need to have your arms down beside you to start with. So if you reach your arms, next to your hips, palms to the ceiling. Let your legs fall and be heavy. Now in this position, I want your glutes fairly relaxed, but at the same time, just subtly reach your tailbone away. Yeah, so it's just lengthening the lower back. Tummy is engaged almost like you're lying on a cold surface and you want to pull it away from that a little. Keeping your head down, as you next breathe out, draw your shoulder blades together so the tops of your shoulders might lift. Your hands might be able to hover slightly, but they're lower than your shoulders. Come back down from there. So working some of our important postural muscles through our upper back. Breathe out. And then inhale, release. As you lift the arms up, don't feel that you have to jam the shoulders down. Rather, than just draw them together across the back of your rib cage. Good. Stay with this if this is appropriate for you. Otherwise, you're going to go into a thoracic extension as well. So drawing your shoulder blades together, hover your head, your neck, your chest up. And you're going to hold this first one. Imagine you're like an arrow darting through the air. Crown of the head is reaching away, chin down slightly. Yeah. Hands are just hovering off and it's the upper back that we're lifting. Good, lower back down from there. So if you're comfortable with that movement, continue here. Try and do that with the shoulder and hand lift. So everything coordinates together. Yes, chin down a touch and back down. Good, we're going to do three more here. Picture yourself getting a little bit longer. Feet all the way through to the top of your head. And down. And holding this next one at the top. Good. Establish that position where you can maintain stable through the spine. Now just your arms, push them up to the ceiling, both at the same time, beating for 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good. Press back into a child's pose. So hips towards your heels. Knees can be together or slightly out wide to the side. Reach your arms long. Let yourself open underneath the shoulders and through the lower back. Good. Take a couple of breaths there. Now transition one more time to your four point kneeling position. So bring your weight forwards, hands under your shoulders. Good, step yourself forward a bit more. Again, modify fists, forearms as you need to. But I'm going to work into plank a little bit. So if you know that's right for you to go back onto your knees, then do that. Otherwise, Laura, I'd like you on your breath out to step one foot and then the other back to a full plank. Good. Neck in line, just like you were on your hands and your knees, your chest is pressing upwards, tummy is working quite strongly, and you're breathing. Yeah. Yes. Inhaling and exhaling, you're working to hold this static position. Good. Bring your knees down one by one. Good, 
and reset anything that you need to. On the next one, we're going to do some small little knee tucks. So you'll be bending them down almost to this position, but not actually to touch the floor. So if you establish your plank first, good, lift out of the shoulder girdle, good. Now inhale as you bend your knees, exhale, push back. We're going to continue like that. You'll feel that you are rolling quite towards your toes. If that's not comfortable, just don't bend so far. Good. Working to keep the rest of the back level. We're going to do three more here. Good. Three. And two. And one. All the way back up. And then one knee at a time. Come down. Good. Find your last child's pose of the class. But this time, leave your hips where they are. We'll travel both arms around to one side. Good. As you have traveled the arms around, you'll notice a bit of a side bend. And I want you to take your breath as you go in, into that side body to reach out a little further. Yeah. Any hand placement that feels good for you, sometimes stacking that arm on top of the other. Good. Two more breaths here. Keeping heavy through the pelvis. Good. Then walk your hands back through the centre and to the other side. Good. See if you can send your breath now into the opposite side. So that side that is lengthening out. Good. Keep your hip reaching away from you and your head quite heavy. One more breath here. Then walk your hands back through to the centre. Beautiful. Now you're all done for today. You can stay here for as long as you need to. Yeah? If you've got any questions or any requests, please give us a call or email. We've got our virtual timetable online or perhaps even uh, check out our Square One Connect other classes and see which ones you like.